So. All right, everybody. That was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio headquarters in Hooksit, New Hampshire. Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, iHeartRadio, uh, Pandora, Spotify, iTunes, Google, YouTube, where you're watching us now, wherever you get your podcast from. I'm Pastor Padrone, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Paul, Nick, Dave, Hello. and we have special guest Kendra, the mm. potion master yeah. with us tonight special. from the 724 Lounge, and coming at us via Skype from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Max Stokeby. Nice and warm down Max there. Max Stokeby from Scandinavian Tobacco Group. Thanks for being with us tonight, man. Thanks yes. for having me, y'all. Pleasure yeah. to be back on the podcast. Woo! Very well. Uh, I, I can enjoy Kendra's drinks from here, so not as good, but we'll, oh, we'll manage. You've got a stout. you got a stout going there, right? I got a couple more in the fridge, too. We'll be all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, brother. He came prepared. He came prepared. So Cheers. Have, Thanks for having me, all. Since we have Max uh, Stokeby with us, who is the uh, quintessential pipe guy from the pipe family, um, the first family of uh, pipe tobacco, the uh, Stokebees. We're doing an all pipe show tonight, and we are starting off smoking Peterson's Elizabethan mixture. Mm. Yeah, that be what's from this tin right here. Uh, what can you tell us about that tobacco there, Maxie boy? So what we're smoking here is a Virginia Perique. Uh, it's obviously a ribbon cut. So, you know, some people like their their vapors as you have it in a in a flake form. Uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but here we, we get a nice ribbon cut. Um, slightly peppery, you know, it's a, a mix of a couple of different grades of Virginia, um, mm -hmm. mostly from Brazil and Africa. And then of course the Perique hails from uh, Louisiana St. James Parish, right? Where we get uh, the only world's Perique supply. Mm -hmm. So we got, uh, you know, a slightly sweeter tobacco here with uh, peppery elements from the from the Perique. Um, and then, of course, there's a, a little top flavor uh, uh, added to it of, uh, of, of a, a slight fruitiness, I guess I would say. And part of that, I think, kind of comes from the Virginia, too. Sure. But but that's that's the blend description. So what, what are you guys getting here off the, the top of the bowl? Uh, I'm getting some nice fruity notes, wood, definitely that pepper, that yeah. figgy kind of pepper. Um, um, what are you guys picking up, Dave? Okay. You're the Virginia king. Yep, definitely getting a lot of uh, deep fruits like figs or and like a raisinish. I uh, get the spice and the retro hail, mm -hmm. um, mm. and it's it's very smooth. Mm -hmm. what, what about you, Nicky? Nice fruit. Nice spice on the retro hail, getting a little pepper in the mouth feel there. Yes. Some nice wood note in there. Uh, a little dirt note in there too. A little dirt. Ooh, a little dirt. Like you somebody, like it. You like a little dirty. I like it dirty. Dirty. Um, uh, it's like kind of like um, like somebody kicked some dirt in your teeth real quick. Yeah. I'm, like not, that sure. I'm not sure that that's a. That's like very positive. Well, I, I played, I love it. Man. I played football all my life. So for me, that's just like bringing me back to my football days. I play football. I like it when dirt's kicked in my face. I do. This I reminds do. me of that. It brings me back to the good old days. Yeah. I almost... Nick, Nick, that's actually how we sell it. We say, smoke this. It's like a mouthful of dirt. There you go. <laughs> and people love it, man. It's amazing. People love it. Marketing these days. Take it back to your playing days. <laughs> uh, Paul, do you have anything more uh, on a high note, maybe yeah. just to say about the track? Sure. That wasn't yeah. a high note? So, maybe for you, Nick, it was. But... It was for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a very, it's, 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 a, it's a nice balance of, of fruit. I got a lot of bread notes, some wood, some earth, uh, the, the pepper, but it's so well balanced, so smooth. The retro hail, nice, smooth, light spice, too. Mm. It's really, really good. <laughs> Kendra, what do you think? Mm. So I'm really enjoying the the pepper in the back of mm. my palate. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I can't say specifically like what fruit I'm picking up, but definitely getting a little bit of like the earthiness, the wood. 
Yeah, and very smooth and balanced. I think that. And there's some sweetness there too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. So you've made a hot toddy for us to to pair with this. What what uh, what is it exactly? So tonight we're doing all <laughs> Japanese whiskey. Mm, Japanese. So oh. I was, you know, I, all whiskey. <laughs> Yeah. I knew oh, a little I bit. Saw. Oh, I saw. <laughs> uh, oh boy! <laughs> Calm down, fellas. Calm down. Oh, Settle down now. I need the whiskey. <laughs> so I I knew a little bit about what we were smoking. Um, not a lot because I I was off today. But I was kind of thinking mm. with um my conversation with Dave, we were almost discussing scotch. But then I was like, I kind of am thinking like a little bit. Mm. more lighter bodied and you know Japanese whiskey is very close to scotch but you get a little bit more sweetness more floral and it's a little bit lighter body I am mm -hmm. very happy you changed your mind so so I decided to do a cocktail um the first one is with Centauri Toki and this is a, a a value Japanese whiskey it's a little bit cheaper so in my mind that's good for a cocktail so I did a Japanese hot toddy with green tea local honey and lemon and mint oh, no. and I can say I, I do like how the honey is kind of playing off of mm -hmm. um the tobacco I don't know if I completely love the citrus but mm -hmm. but yeah I think it's it, it's working mm -hmm. what it's doing is actually bringing out a lot more of the pepper earth notes mm -hmm. for me specifically yeah, on the retro Hail. Wow, that really just popped. Right. Mm, totally. Yeah. Totally. Like I'm, all, I'm loving great. the pairing. Yes. I'm loving the pairing. What what so, do you think? Meg? Pairing's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are what are you uh uh drinking with your uh backy there? We have uh, a glass of uh left hand milk stout, uh nitro milk stout. So nitro milk stout. <clears throat> No I like something uh, something that's a little less acidic and a little less sweet to pair with these uh, Virginia heavy tobaccos. And the next one we got here is Burley heavy, so pretty acidic tobacco. So I like something to kind of balance that in my mouth. Um, so, you know, I, I, I steer away from some of the IPAs and Pilsners and go more towards the kind of uh, porters and stouts uh, when, when I'm smoking these types of tobaccos. So. So you're you're drinking something that's got a little bit more body to it than we are. Um, how is that affecting the the Virginian Perique here for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. I, I think it's um it's a very like yin and yang thing. I think when you pair something that's lighter and more floral like this with a with a darker and heavier beer like the milk stout, it just pronounces the the natural sugars that are in the in the Virginia leaf, um, and, and of course that pepperiness. Is muted a little bit, um, right. but I think everything just just combines nicely when when you 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 contrast it with with the sip, right? So right. I, I think maybe for what you guys are sipping, it it's a little more in line with what you're smoking, whereas here it's uh, it's almost like the Virginia Perique itself, right? Where pairing Virginia and Perique, they're like polar opposites. Right. Virginia, you have you have you know you have low nicotine, you have high sugar content, you have low oil content. In Perique, it's the opposite. You have low sugar, high nicotine, high oil. Then that Perique, which is basically like a cousin of the Burley plant, that's fermented in a whiskey barrel for like a year plus. It just sits and ferments and adds to that nicotine and that body. And so it contrasts so perfectly with the lightness of the Virginia. That's why Virginia Periques are so popular. Mm. Um, and so for me, yeah, something that further adds to that yin and yang, like I said, of, of just contrasting the flavors, helps enunciate uh, the tobaccos, in this case, being the Virginia primarily. So, and I, I have a question for the group too, and I guess specifically for you, David, since you're kind of the uh, mm -hmm. resident Virginia smoker from what I'm gathering, how does this compare to uh, some of your other favorite Virginia Periques, say, uh, or like Golden Sliced or uh, you know, back when we had it, the Lane 125th anniversary, because it is a ribbon cut, right? So it's a little different in, in the marriage of flavors. Um, I feel like, I feel like it has its own place. Like I, I really like, I have a hard time not liking a, a Virginia tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> there really isn't a Virginia tobacco that I haven't really liked. Actually, that, that's not true, but, uh, the, um, but no, I love I love 
the pairing is making the spice come out uh, for us. And, and muting some of the, for me, or I guess, I don't want to speak for everybody. Thank uh, you, Dave. <laughs> um, and I, I, it's really different to me right now. Uh, I smoked it earlier this morning, or did I? No, this is the this is the other one. I did not smoke this earlier this morning. That was the other one. Yeah. It's yeah. hard to keep track. Um, not really. Focus, okay. Dave. Focus, Dave. Focus on the question. Focus. But yeah, this is, this is definitely one of my favorites now. Now, now, <laughs> now, while we're on the show, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Un- until the next Virginia I smoke. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, Max, uh, it was almost a, a year ago that you were on the show with us the first time. And then we were in the kitchen back room, you know, of of twins in Londonderry doing an audio podcast for that. And. And, you know, obviously things have changed. You're there, we're here and everything, but it's, it's been about a year. What, what have you been up to? Yeah, good question. So uh, obviously since uh, the pandemic and everything, <laughs> we, we've been, uh, you know, grounded in, in our travel, which for me obviously is, is a huge part of my job with my role as, as a brand ambassador. So everything's really gone digital uh, for us here, Dan. So, um, you know, I'm doing a, a group uh, every Friday night at 8.30s. Uh, it's thispipelife.com, which I know you're familiar with the website. Right. It's a forum that we host. Uh, so a group of the guys on there, you know, we gathered and decided we were going to start meeting on every Friday. And so we've, uh, among other things, done uh, blending events. We've had guest speakers, uh, pipe carvers, uh, other tobacconists. So it's, it's really been fun. So we do that every Friday, and that's still going now, actually. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, it's the, the occasional podcast and getting on with, with some retailers um, and then, yeah, yeah, just uh, doing some training, some internal training for our different sales teams sure. um, within the organization. Um, but now uh, uh, we're starting to sort of see the light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, we're gearing up. Uh, we're starting to get back out there a little bit, uh, working with some of our new reps. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, um, I- I've changed, you know, some of uh, my old events and trying to make those uh, sort of present in a digital format. So uh, among other things, one of those is, is the blending event that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to go do in, in Londonderry with you guys uh, about a year ago. Wow. Um, and so, we're, for example, we, we've made that that digital now. So, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of sitting in front of computer screens. But um, <laughs> like I said, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. So <laughs> I'm really excited to, to get back out there. But yeah, the last year is has been a lot of, of, of digital uh, digital events and and yeah yeah networking uh, through our, our online channels so yep yep that's been about the same with everybody I mean the whole reason we're you know doing video now started with COVID mm-hmm. and it kind of just uh, kind of took over you know what we were doing um, what exactly is a brand ambassador. <laughs> what does a brand ambassador do? So, uh, as a brand ambassador, it's a good question. I know, right? It's it's a uh, it's a little aloof. No, but uh, what what I do uh, is I I do events, right? So uh, <laughs> it's the world's best job. Um, no, but but uh, back back uh, before pandemic. It was, uh, it's events with retailers. It's uh, working with our new reps to get them comfortable with a new category of pipe tobacco, which was new to the general cigar uh, sales force team because they are a, right. a dual, a general cigar guys, right? So to a lot of them, pipe tobacco was kind of new. So it was getting them familiarized with that. Uh, obviously doing events with retailers. We have uh, different trade shows and by trade shows, right? Those are the regional pipe shows that, Mm-hmm. Uh, there are roughly a dozen of uh, a year. Uh, at least this was back in 2019, right? So your Chicago pipe shows, uh, uh, your Columbia pipe shows, or Columbus, excuse me, pipe shows. Uh, so that's a big part of it too, you know. Um, and, and yeah, you know, basically we we go out there and, and I get to represent all of the Peter Stokeby and Lane uh, uh, pipe tobacco blends that that exist, as well as all of our. Uh, tin pipe tobacco brands as well. So, uh, you know, it's a it's a lot of 
things to juggle and it's a lot of things the job income passes but uh you know I, I get to kind of be the pipe tobacco guy at general cigar company and that's uh that's a pretty sweet gig um so i would imagine yeah. so I, I i would also imagine it's kind of daunting i mean there's so many different i mean just just the peter stokeby and lane bulk tobaccos there's so many different offerings of that and then you've got the the standard peterson um pipe tobaccos and now you have what was dunhill now peterson pipe yeah. tobaccos I, how do you keep it all straight man i mean <laughs> how, much, how many, how many ex blends do you actually have to know off the top of your head it, it, it's a great question yeah no we have uh you know there's probably roughly a hundred different blends of pipe tobacco that i represent um so it, it's a lot to stay on top of um you know i th first thing is you have to be a pipe smoker so, yeah. <laughs> you can, so you can try it and know what you're talking about you know That's and and i do i do uh, i i am guilty of of being the guy who finds something and falls in love with it for like a month you know so uh like lately for me it's been uh, Aaron Moore mixture which yeah. i don't know if you guys have had it it comes yeah. in a flake yeah. as well you know it's uh, a bca and some bright virginia so and i'll kind of get stuck on that it, it's it's maybe a problem I have, Dan. I don't know. I do the same with beers sometimes. I really fall in love with something, and I, I pardon my French, I smoke the shit out of it. And then <laughs> I just kind of, I wouldn't say I become disgusted with it, but I'm over it. And yeah. then I leave it for like half a month, and then all of a sudden it's calling to me again, and I return to it, and there's a different appreciation, like a long-lost friend or something. And so um, if that answers your question, I guess uh, – to, to, to put it frankly, it's like you, you smoke it one at a time and you kind of just learn that blend inside out. Um, and then I feel like you can talk to it, you know. So for me, it started with like one Q and BCA. Um, and then, you know, as I was smoking a lot of aromatics, some of the, the older pipe guys would say, well, you're not a real pipe smoker if you're not smoking a Virginia Perique or an English. <laughs> and so, you know, of course, that would hurt my ego, uh, which, as you guys know, it's a huge ego to keep in check. So. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, you know, it, it, it would hurt me a little bit. So I would start to smoke some of these sort of hybrid blends, um, you know, like uh, the Englishes with a little black Cavendish in it mm -hmm. that sort of have a little bit of that sweetness with the Latakia, with the smokiness. So I would kind of bridge that gap gradually. Um, but it happened over time, you know. So I think the important thing is to, to kind of enjoy what you're smoking. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Otherwise, it's hard for me to go out and recommend it to people. So I, I try to take my time with each tobacco, um, and it does it does take just that. It takes time. So you know, there's still there's still a blend here or there that I have not smoked that that I'm getting around to slowly but surely. So um, as a matter of fact, our next tobacco, Three Ps, uh, I've only had it a couple of times. So, but I really really like it. Um, mm. So uh, the one I'm we're smoking now, I'm pretty familiar with. Elizabethan mixture is is a great. Virginia Perique. Um, to me, you know, once again, this is one of the more earthier uh, Virginia Periques. Yeah. I don't find it as light as like a Orly Golden Sliced. No. Um, so just something in the top notes, I believe, uh, for me. So. Sure. Um, so I know we've talked a little bit about how COVID has affected things. You're doing a lot of virtual events and stuff, but you know, on a on a broader scale. You know, like you said, your your job was really to go to to retail stores and do events, to do the regional pipe shows, and to um, educate the the sales force of uh, General Cigars. All this has kind of changed that, and and how how has it made your job easier, and how has it made it more difficult? for you that's a good question yeah so i think the most obvious difference is uh is the change in hours mm -hmm. right so um before although it wasn't very set because once again as a, as a brand ambassador you're on the road all the time and working hours become mixed up when you're at a at a store and you're doing an event from five six o'clock to nine ten o'clock at night and then you know, maybe you're starting a little later, so you start at 10. Um, but but uh, 
I think regardless, um, now I'm more on and ready 24 seven work versus back then, maybe like the mornings were for me to work out and do my stretching and have my pipe in the morning and just kind of, you know, read the news or whatever. Now I feel like, and it's totally fair. Um, but now, you know, if, if somebody needs me at, I don't know, eight o'clock on a Saturday, I'm, I'm ready for it, you know, cause that's just, that's sort of the working hours nowadays. Um, yeah. So that's, that's been a big change. And then the second one, like the physically, the biggest change is, is the travel. You know, I was used to being on the road about three weeks out of the month. And so when everything changed, I mean, like initially I was having dreams about being on flights <laughs> and being in airports and missing a flight or flying to the wrong city. And I'm waking up like, oh, I'm still in my bed. Like I'm what just so used mean? to waking up in a hotel and being like, the hell am I doing in Cleveland, you know? And it's, <laughs> so that's been a big difference really is just like getting used to not being on the go 24 seven. It's, uh, you know, I've had to uh, set some some uh, routines and stuff here at home that help keep me grounded and uh, and and keep a sense of that, you know, a, a routine. So it's been different, yeah, man. It has. So I, I gotta say though, I'm I'm re I'm ready to get back out there. I really am. So, <laughs> uh, um, so you ever you ever cross paths with your with your dad in the business? I do. I do. Yeah. And is, um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about some bad tobacco, Dan. It's got to be a good like, thing. No, no. It, they, they make good tobaccos. And listen, uh, you know, at a, a broader picture in this uh, pipe tobacco industry, um, we don't exactly have new manufacturers and um, and new brands popping up every day. You know what I mean? It's kind of the opposite as far as consolidation and shutting doors uh, goes in this industry um, as the industry evolves. Mm -hmm. It's very nice to see other brands existing. And with regards to the fourth generation stuff, you know, there's the accessories and the pipes. So, you know, for example, here I've got my, a nice fourth generation uh, pipe pouch here and holder. So and along with the actual pipes themselves, which are, are gorgeous pieces of art. Um, yeah. No, there's no problem. You know, we just have enough beers until we're good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know. How do you talk to your dad? Like, you know, well, it's a common ground. <laughs> Well, uh, yep, there it is. Yeah. No, but yeah. no, I mean, you, to answer your question, we, you know, obviously we, we used to bump into each other specifically at these uh, regional pipe shows. You know, he sure. would be at the at the bigger ones, certainly. And so I would see him there. Um, yeah, and it's always fun bumping into each other, you know, grab a meal and talk business. So, yeah. yeah. But you say, yeah, Dad, but, but I got one cue. <laughs> and then he says but you work for the evil empire you know <laughs> and then i and then i and then i walk away to the tune of the dark side so it's fine oh my gosh yeah 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 um so what what do you do in your downtime in my downtime well so i guess what do you do to relax what do you do get out? I mean, do you go out? Do you eat? Do you, do you like a certain kind of food? Do you golf? Do you do we first used to go out. You used we to go, used to go out, out, and out and eat. Watch Netflix or something? Yeah, yeah. So I'm a, a little bit about myself. I'm a I'm a big nerd, Dan. So, nerd. so you like, like the Mandalorian like Dave does? Star Wars, uh, Marvel Comics <laughs> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> video games mm -hmm. like uh, new tech all the nerdy stuff i'm pretty into um What's your favorite video game right now right now uh last of us part two. Oh, nice uh -oh. that was a that was a pretty pretty phenomenal game mm -hmm. um and otherwise uh i have had some back issues in the past so yeah, and and that's it's gotten a lot better. So this is not a, a pity story, but it's led me to do a lot of stretching and yoga. So hey. a big part yep. of of what I do now to relax is yoga and stretching in the morning, 
I got a, uh, I'll show you. I got an acupressure mat, which it's, it's a spike mat. These are little spikes. Really? And you lay on it for like 20 minutes and your back goes numb and you can't feel anything. And uh, that really has gone a long way in helping my back too. So I'll lay on that thing. I'll do some yoga, and uh, it's all kind of helped strengthen up. So I had a I had a dislocated disc, I guess, to make the, the story even bigger. Um, but it, it's gotten a lot better now. This was like three years ago. Um, but it's I guess the point of what I'm saying here is it's become part of a, a big thing of what I do almost every day. So I really enjoy it. I used to work out a lot and play a lot of basketball. Um, right. and that obviously became impossible with, with the, the bulging disc. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy that. And, uh, you ask what I do to relax. Hey, but you look at spikes and play video games. You're looking at it. Yeah. I work and if I'm home, it's, uh, it's video games. If I can get the girlfriend to watch a, a star Wars or a Marvel movie with me, I will. And if not, you know, all right. Oh, now he's talking. You opened that door. So tell us about the girlfriend. Oh, <laughs> Katie, is, Katie is fantastic. So actually, that's funny, Dan, because um, you said that I was out there about a year ago. Yeah. So Katie and I were actually long distance dating and she lived in Boston. Yes. So I, I think, remember oh, that. That's I, why I asked. I beat. think the minute we were done with our podcast recording and my drinks and I said farewell, I hopped in an Uber and uh, went about an hour back to Boston. So mm -hmm. now, um, <laughs> just to do, speaking of, of quarantine and changes in my life, um, we moved in together at the beginning of March. Oh. So we were long distance for a year, Atlanta to Boston. Mm -hmm. And then we were always like, wouldn't it just be great if we could just be together and the world would just stop for like a couple of months? So this might be our fault, I guess is what I'm saying. You might have changed it. Careful what you wish for. So, so we moved in together. And then two weeks later, I mean, we had literally just finished moving the power over and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the road in New Jersey, actually, for a regional pipe show, the, the Newark Pipe Show. Um, and I was up uh, with Cup of Joe's, uh, Kathy up there, uh, uh, doing a little pre-night event with her, and uh, everything kind of hit the fan, and I, I flew back home, and uh, yeah, we proceeded to be quarantined together for the next uh, nine months, so yeah, it's, you know. There you go. You want to get to know her? All right, buddy. How about you just are stuck with her for the next <laughs> That's it. Right there. I, I say that, you know. I say that, and it, it's been great. So it's it's been a true test, but it's hold been really on, good. Hold on, I gotta ask you so, one question. Uh -oh. Did you turn her into a pipe girl or what? No, no. Uh -oh. Come you, on, you had you had nine, nine months. months. Nine months. Come <laughs> on. So here's nine the thing, Nick. Couldn't here's the thing. Here's on. the thing. She was a cigarette smoker, and she loves the Peter Stoke B roll your own, but she can't roll cigarettes. So when we started dating she would get me to roll her these cigarettes. So I think that had 90% to do with how I got her to date me in the first place, is I had to <laughs> supply her with her nicotine habit. Uh, and so I've tried to tell her, you know, I've tried to tell her, hey, if you like the stoke to be roll your own, there's great pipe tobaccos that are, that are similar, um, but, but she, she, she won't do it, man. And, and I've tried, believe me, but uh, that's a non-starter right now, so. Oh my gosh, all the different Stokeby jokes that I can come up with right now. I can't say it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that opens you up, man. Beautiful. That's awesome. That's mm. awesome. Congratulations. So she's the one who gave you permission to smoke in the apartment tonight? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting it all together, man. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's my yeah, sense. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Own sixth sense there. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so one of the one of the new segments we have on the show is um, we we are uh, all kind of uh, going through the tobacconist university program. Uh, I've graduated from that. Dave is specifically studying that to do his uh, to get his um, to get certified as a retail tobacconist. And awesome. every week we he, all are. We all are. <clears throat> 
Well, I've actually done it. Well, yeah. Paul's reading. I'm reading. Yeah. He's reading. So we're all studying. You're all Kendra, studying. That's right. Kendra, Kendra looked at the book the other day. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Oh, that's a book. <laughs> I'm a bartender. I got enough crap I'm to deal with. I have, really? the drama. <laughs> I have all the drama I need in my life right now. <laughs> so, but uh, every week we're doing a uh, Tobacconist University Word of the Week. Mm. And Dave, what is the Word of the Week this week? Today's word of the week is rubbing out. <laughs> is that a tobacconist thing, Dave? Yes, it is. Tell <laughs> me about that. Uh, Kendra knows uh, all about that. Uh, hey, that's somebody. what Max and Grover do. All right. Sometimes, Rub out some you know. of that stoke could be for me. I gotta. I, got, I can make that even better. I can make that even better. Um, when people ask me and they're new to flake tobaccos and they ask how it should be smoked. And I say, well, oh, well, people do it one of two ways. Either they fold it up a couple of times and stick it in their pipe and then they smoke it. Or, you know, you just uh, rub it out in the palm of your hand. And then I say that and they lose it, you know. So <laughs> Four choice of words. <laughs> yeah. The best it's, choice it's, of it's, words. It's very unfortunate. Hey, sometimes they, you got to rub it out. Dave, what does rubbing it out mean in the tobacco <laughs> world? <clears throat> rubbing out. <laughs> in the tobacco world, Dave, rubbing out. Rubbing Nothing out. Nothing to do with baby yoga. Yoda. Yoda. Yoga. Yoga. Or Grogu. 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 Yes. Get with it, Dan. It's Grogu. <laughs> Friggin' cute. Anyway, the process of breaking up a dense tobacco in the palm of the hand. Place tobacco in one palm and apply gentle pressure to the tobacco with the other palm. That's exactly what I do. While moving your hands in a small circular motion. This will loosen up and break up the tobacco enough to prepare it for smoking. Rubbing out is typically necessary with flake and plug tobaccos. That's with the voice. That's, That's his announcer voice. voice. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why. <laughs> wow. So there you have it. The Tobacco University Word of the Week. Rubbing, rubbing, rubbing it out. Hey, sometimes Beautiful. you just gotta rub it out. Mm. Hey, um, one last oh, question for you before we before we do our final verdict on uh, Elizabeth mixture here. Uh, every week I do something called uh, Pastor Padron Cigar Confessions, but uh, we're not doing cigars this week. We're doing pipes, and uh, a lot of times when we have guests on, what I've been doing is kind of throwing the question out to the guest there, and so Max. What is one of your pipe smoking pet peeves? Something that you see people doing that you really wish they would stop doing so that they my, would enjoy their pipe smoking more. My pipe smoking is a good question. My pipe smoking pet peeve <laughs> would have to be, and it's a little overarching, uh, but dirty pipes. So dirty people, pipes. People who don't maintain their pipes kills me, man. Like people who won't run cleaners through it, you know, the 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 mouthpiece is all chewed up and oh. colors changed. <laughs> Which don't get me wrong, I have some of those myself. Um, but 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 you know, just a real gunky, nasty pipe, and and it's like, oh, this thing doesn't smoke anymore. And you know, well, when's the last time you ran a cleaner through it? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, dirty, dirty pipes, man. Can't clean, clean your instruments. Clean your pipe. <laughs> clean clean your pipe. instruments. Mm. That is a good one. You know, I I um, you know. I had that experience, you know, way back when, you know, I was, I didn't really know what I was doing when I first started smoking a pipe. And somebody said, you know, Dan, that, that bowl used to be like twice as big. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> and started re and realized that I had, you know, all this cake in the bowl and, uh, you know, it had, it had totally, you know, snuck up on me. Now I'm reaming my pipes and, and you know, I, I run, run cleaners through them all the time. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I do that. It, but that is it, it does. It changes. It changes the uh, the way the pipe performs and how the tobacco tastes. That's absolutely true. That's cool. Well, That's and, a, and I, you know, I do think cake is important, but there's a right level. 
Right. And in the in the purest world, you know, that cake should really just be residual from, you know, one or two blends. Right, right, in, right. In the perfect world. See, you can have too much cake out there, people. There is such a thing as too much cake. But I yeah, like at least cake. we talk about pipes. I like there's cake. such a thing as you too much cake. Sing the Rihanna Not that cake. Song every time you say the word cake. What? You know the Rihanna song? Oh. <laughs> cake, 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 cake. cake, cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So what's what's our final verdict on this uh, Peterson Elizabethan mixture? And Kendra, I wanna I wanna start with you. Hmm. You do? I do. <laughs> why wait? Why wait to? To, for the be- why save the best till last? We'll we'll start with you first. Well, I don't know if my um, tasting notes have changed at all from the beginning, but mm-hmm. you know, I I was happy to come on this show because I do thoroughly enjoy smoking my pipe, um, and mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of it's kind of my thing. But I mean, I, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I. I'm not saying it's a slam dunk for my pairing because, you know, there's no ha- happy dance that's about to happen. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. We all want the happy I, dance. I know. Happy dance. But I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Max's lead. And once we tap that keg of chai nitro milk stout from left hand, I think that's going to be Kendra's staff pick of the week. Mm. All right. Are you we know? all, all going to share in that staff <laughs> pick of the week? Yes. Well, sure. yeah, I think I think that he made good some picture, good yeah. points yeah. with what he paired yeah. tonight, and I'd like to kind of, you know, put some attention on that keg. I think it's going to be really good with this tobacco for sure. I'll mm. give it some attention. Yes, yeah. yes. That should be the. That should be the. <laughs> I bet you will, Danny. That should, I that bet should be you the. Will, so. Kendra, that you be love the, that keg. You love it good. <laughs> I love that keg. That should be the staff pairing of the week. Ooh, mm. but the I'm only down with that. Problem with that is that um, I mean we can talk about that. Um, I just don't. I don't sell pipe tobacco upstairs. I mean we could. Maybe you should. We, yes. Mm. Maybe so we this can. is going to have to be a whole conversation. All right. <laughs> but I think that's Kendra's final thought. For sorry, Kurt, you're going to have to just <laughs> smoke somewhere else. Well, no, we have, <laughs> it's pipe tobacco. We have an empty right. humidor upstairs. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but he. He took that. Uh, he took that humidifier from that. So well, you don't need the, a humidifier. That's true. Oh my God, that's Ooh. true. Ooh. Yeah. Up yeah. 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 And furthermore, furthermore, if you guys need some uh, some merchandising help, some jars, you got a tobacco guy. It's part of what I do. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. Here Max, we go. Hook us up, boy. There you go. <laughs> Paul, what do you think of the uh, uh, tobacco here in the pairing? I, well, first mixture. of all, the pairing I thought was really, really good. I mm. really enjoyed this this hot uh, hot toddy. Um, I love I love the Suntory whiskey anyways. I know Kendra's really kind of uh, steered me into that uh, through a few other podcasts that we did. Mm-hmm. But the tobacco, I the one thing I really want to take home with this tobacco, I love the pepper note from this. Mm-hmm. I, th- that's Insane. probably the one... Uh, differential from any other Virginia Perique blend is this Peppa Note. So this is really becoming a a, a very uh, a favorite of mine right now, Max. This is uh, probably this is at good. the higher end of, of my Virginia Perique blends. So it's I, transcendent. Thank you. <laughs> it is very much transcendent. Very good. Nick? Well, considering this is my second bowl, um, <laughs> there you go. This is great. Uh, the, the Virginia's Nice sweet note with that pepper note that you get on that retro hill is just uh, so addictive that you yeah. just want. I've been hammering it every single time. And with the pairing, really nice. I wish Kendra would have poured a little bit more whiskey in there for me. Sure, you did. Um, <laughs> Why'd you water it down with that tea, Kendra? Why'd you water it down with that tea? Really ball? nice. I gave you a separate cup of whiskey. What it's already gone. That was gone before. I know. We that, that was like a, just a pregame. I wish you would have put that in there. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It was good. The sweet honey note in there with the tea and everything it was it was really really nice. Dave. I enjoyed it. Uh, I concur with Paul that uh, the pepper retro hail in this is just intoxicating. Mm-hmm. It is. I, I, I retro hail every single puff. Um, the, the, <laughs> like the little bit of stewed fruits, um, but that spice. Mm. That's where it's yeah. at. Um, I'm done. I, yeah. I, I know Nick went and, and loaded his pipe up again, but yeah. you know, I, I, 
to, I, I've, I can count on one hand the times I've actually finished a bowl in a segment that has not gone 45 minutes. Yeah. I was uh, um, totally pounding on this stuff. I, I concur with everybody here. This was great, especially yeah. if you like that pepper note in, mm. a, in a Virginia Preak blend. Uh, Peterson Elizabethan mixture. Great, great choice for you out there. Um, we're going to take a little break at this point and get our pipes ready for the next uh, pipe tobacco that we're doing, which will be Peterson's Three Ps. We're also going to be getting uh, glasses together for our next pairing. So Whoa. hang in there. Those of you who are watching, we'll be right back right after this.
All right, everybody, we're back. And thank God we're back. Um, we are smoking this, Peterson's Three Peas, this immensely thick tin of pipe tobacco, which includes this Show little, the plug. nice little plug. Well, so, my plug's so about half the size. It's, it's too, not fair yeah. to it's not fair to show it anymore. Mine's a baby plug. Um, but uh, Max, what can you tell us about Peterson's three P's? Peterson Perfect Plug. Absolutely. So here we have uh, Virginia and Burley. Oh yes. together. Mm -hmm. So Press the Virginia pepper. is uh, two two different uh, grades. We have one from Africa, I believe, Malawi. Mm -hmm. And one from Brazil. And mm -hmm. then the Burley is from Malawi, which most of the world's Burley production today comes from Malawi. Some from Mexico and a little bit still domestically here in the U.S., but most of it comes from Malawi. Um, so those are pressed together, obviously, to give us this lovely little plug. Um, and then a top flavor, a fruity top flavor is added to it. Um, what does that mean, fruity top flavor? What does it, that mean? It it varies. There's it varies. some there's like some like, industry. Say what? What does it mean? What, does it mean? There, what do you? There's use? some industry industry secrecy to the top flavor, um, mm. but but fruity top flavor varies. Sometimes you have berries. Sometimes you have uh, something a little more plum like. Sometimes you have something a little more pineapple like. So for example, I talked about Aaron more earlier today. That's technically got a fruity top note. That fruit is more pineapple forward. Yeah. Here, we're probably more like plum forward. Okay. Plum, plum, plum raisin, I guess, mm -hmm. if you will. Some of that is from the earthiness. Mm -hmm. Most of that is from the earthiness of the burly, but there's some top flavor as well. Um, now, this, this is one heck of a plug. Oh, yeah. You really have to whittle it. This thing. Serious drug. Yeah, this, this, you have to cut into it. You need, you need a really sharp knife to cut through this one. Yeah. This is yeah. This, dense. This, this is a could, dense plug. You could kill somebody with this. Really? <laughs> well, maybe, yeah. If you, know? you shoot it out of a cannon. Oh, yeah. no. The, the edges no, no, are dude. sharp enough. If I, I could if he hucks probably it at you, beat you're you dead. to death with this plug. I'd love you'd for you. <laughs> you'd bleed if I started, you know, slicing with this plug. Could you do it, please? <laughs> Imagine the police report: uh, assault, and, assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. Uh, assault and battery with a dangerous plug. A dangerous That's plug. Right. <laughs> and he didn't even rub it out first. I know. <laughs> didn't even rub it. I didn't but, even. Rub but it is. Um, it's it's the only plug that we manufacture. So, you know, a, a, a lot of our you know, flake stuff, I guess, if you will, um, is already cut, right? So right. It's there is something kind of fun and tactile about this. Obviously, the moisture keeps tremendously as well. Oh, uh, totally. But, yeah, yeah you know, I, I cut mine, you know, in the middle of the afternoon, so it will be ready to smoke tonight. This stuff holds moisture like nobody's business. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, now, yeah. What's the deal with this huge, like, you know, inch and a half to two-inch tin and you open it up, and there's this little dinky square in the middle of it. <laughs> it's like, it's like you know, so what is that? What is I that? know it seems it's ridiculous, kind of like, but like then if you turn the plug on its side and yeah. then put it in the tin, see how close to the top it is. So what you risk on a production line is if this plug falls in like this and you have a smaller average tin right uh not 150 gram tin it wouldn't be able to close so so what you're telling me is if you don't lay the plug in right it won't fit sir <laughs> <laughs> oh Kendra gotta, just gave me a look you gotta oh you gotta, that's right you gotta go in sideways <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta go in sideways. Okay, Nick, stop talking. So it can fit. All I'm right. just saying. That's what oh you have to do. Gosh. That's what you're saying, right? So it's a good Kendra, thing we rub it up first. Uh, Kendra, completely ignoring what Dave is saying. <laughs> what are we pairing? <laughs> what What's the drink we're pairing tonight with this pipe tobacco? Three peas. So you guys should feel very lucky. This oh. is a very special bottle to me. A very special bottle? Why yeah, is it very special to you, Kendra? It is one of my absolute favorites. It's Nika from the Barrel. 
Nika from oh, the barrel. Oh yes. Nika I remember Nika barrel. from the barrel. Nika from, yep. the, Nika from the barrel. I believe it was 2018. It was um, in the top three whiskeys of the year. Um, oh, for whiskey oh, advocate. Oh. It really is good. It's mm. um, it's, mm. it's very balanced. It has um, like some orange kind mm. of fruitiness, mm. a little bit of floral in the palate, and it finishes mm. with like a really nice cinnamon spice. Oh, the mm. it's, flavor! It's amazing. The it's nose, absolutely amazing. the nose is so intoxicating. Yeah. It's so, oh. It is mm, absolutely one of right. my top ten Ooh. my favorites. Oh, that is that really, really good. Nice. Oh. How, how, how available is this? Um, not super available, but it does make an appearance here and there. Hello. And grab it if you ever see it. Can you let us know when it's available next? Yeah, I, at the shop we have a good amount because we bought everything we could find in that moment. But um, I've seen it here and there. All and right. So I've okay. had I've had about three bottles at home. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. three, three bottles. <laughs> Trace. All right. Well, I brought it here tonight to share mm -hmm. with you guys. Thank because... you. Very so nice, Kendra. Very <laughs> nice. Uh, Max, are you still drinking your milky stout? I'm still on the milk stout. Yeah. So for, for me, it's even better with this because here this blend is, well, we have burly, right? And it's yeah, right. way more present in the smoke. And so I referred to this acidity in tobacco earlier. It typically is highest in burly tobaccos. Mm -hmm. um, it is high in Virginia's as well, but not as high. So if you're someone who suffers from uh, uh, tongue bite because of the acidity, this uh, this beer that's just lower in that pH scale balances it out. So yeah, cheers. Mm. Mm. Well, I feel like a nitro beer also. I think we helps lost your audio, too. Max. Did I fall out? Can you guys hear me? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we yeah, are. Yeah. Okay. Did you catch what I was saying, or did I fall out? Oh, you, fell you totally fell off the grid. Oh no. Well, I, what I was saying is the 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 pH balance on something like this is a lot lower than on Burley. So it, it just, for somebody like me who's a little susceptible to some tongue bite with a Burley heavy flavor or blend like this, excuse me, uh, it, it helps balance it out. Uh, brings my, my palate back to uh, neutral or closer to it anyway. Good, mm. good. Very nice. Kendra, what are you thinking here of your uh, pairing? Oh. Because I'm thinking it's good. Oh, yeah. it's very it's better good. better than the last one, man. Yeah, I think My it's God. the winner of the night. Mm -hmm. yeah. I knew it mm. would be. <clears throat> of course you did. Of course. Is that the, the extra body in this? Is that what's doing it? Yeah. You know, we started with a, a whiskey oh. that's kind of like on the budget end. And this is like the top notch of, you know, Japanese whiskeys that I've tried. You know, and I think the, the notes in this um, really do well with with this tobacco for sure you know just a, it's for completely sure. <laughs> is that going to be my new thing it can yeah, be it can yeah. be yeah. no more sausage rope no it's that's last year <laughs> okay sausage i so you were saying <laughs> <laughs> But no, like a, a really nice sweetness comes forward, like mm -hmm. an orange zest or mm -hmm. a vanilla with a, a finish of cinnamon. Mm. And it holds up really nice, like medium to, to full, mm. you know. So I, this with this tobacco, it, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, it does. Dave, what do you think? I think. Okay, Dave's Nick, what do you <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Paul? What about you? What do you think? I didn't even say anything. I, okay, so that, that's exactly. exactly. I didn't say anything. Exactly. Yes. I, I wanted to say something. Go ahead, you Nick. Just did. Go ahead. Go ahead. What go do ahead. you want to say? Nick? Thirty seconds or less. Outstanding. <laughs> what if he's speechless? Okay. He said outstanding. Okay. Outstanding. Uh, so, Paul, what what do you think? The first notes that I got from this tobacco was a nice deep fruit, just really really rich. Mm. I think that's that's what's uh, that's what's standing out to me. Uh, I look her. A little bit of. Uh, Maybe just a little bit of woody notes, a little bit of bread, but the the fruit notes are just so prevalent. Um, it's really delicious. What do you think of the pairing? Pairing fantastic, completely complimentary. 
Without a doubt. This yes. is such a complimentary pairing. Would it be a weird Brie thing to say by, I'm getting a lot of cardamom. What? No. A, Brie, Brie. a weird, weird Brie? Brie would say, this like, reminds me of cardamom? my grandfather's cottage out in a <laughs> I remember being there when I was seven, and it was just this <laughs> flavor in the air, and this was it. That's a weird breathing. Right, and mm. now that you say that, <laughs> I need to tell you guys that Flashback every time, time that I I smoke a pipe with you guys, mm-hmm. I think about my uncle. My uncle Eddie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Another uncle story. <laughs> my uncle Eddie, when I was growing up, was a uncle huge Eddie. life Eddie. smoker, and he always had this crumpled up piece of paper in his pocket. <laughs> right. Every time I smoke with you, I think of my uncle Eddie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I ever would have thought I'd be smoking a pipe. When there you I, go. All I can think about is my Uncle Eddie smoking a pipe. I, with dirty jokes. There you go. <laughs> I am the Darth Piper, so I knew that you would eventually be smoking a pipe. But uh, Uncle Eddie, <laughs> no, no one could have prepared me. God for rest that. his soul. God rest his soul. <laughs> Here's you, Uncle Eddie. <laughs> so, mm. so, so Maxi. What is the attraction of a plug <laughs> there about is, there is pipe snow smoking? There pipe is smoking. None. What is the attraction of a plug? Now, you guys, SCG, you said this is the only plug you make. Why is it the only plug you make? So that's, that's a good question, Dan. I think the attraction <laughs> with the plug. Say <laughs> <Hey>, what? <laughs> Uh, I think the attraction lies in, in kind of what I was referring to earlier. I, I think getting your hands dirty and actually cutting off what you're ready to smoke at the time, uh, mm-hmm. that doesn't exist in any of our other products. So it, part of this tactile process of packing your pipe and getting your tobacco actually cut up and ready to, to pack into your pipe, it's, um, you know, it's, it's part of the process, um, which as pipe smokers, we know the process is part of smoking, right? Right. And getting your pipe packed and sitting down and 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 rubbing it out, right? Um, <laughs> it's all part of it. So, um, yeah, I, I think something like this. Uh, I mentioned. I mentioned the. Are we good. Out with Peterson's perfect plug. Uh, but, but, but I think I think you know. Uh, additionally, once you pop the tin, um, this tobacco really stays fresh until you've cut into it. Um, so, so, you know, some people with uh, some of our other Virginia Perique flakes or uh, other or Virginia Burley flakes, uh, some people, depending on, on the smoker, of course, they want to kind of leave it out a little bit and let it dry a little bit. You know, I've, I know a lot of uh, Orly Golden Slice fans, they like to leave the tin open for about 24, 48 hours until yeah. they smoke it. So um, you get to decide with this plug as opposed to a pre-cut flake, right? That's cut and ready to go and you get no say in it. With this, there's a choice, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think additionally to, the, to, to, to that, it's just fun, right? Um, yeah. What's funny in addition to this, and this is sort of a side tangent, but in Europe actually for a couple of years ago, and they might still exist, I'm not that familiar with it, but they were making plugs but actually the size of a pipe tobacco bowl. And so the concept was that you eliminated packing a bowl and you eliminated the time to sit and and, and pack it and get it ready. And everything, essentially a pipe pack just came in this little plug that that fit perfectly in a bowl. And it was a little smaller, right? So you would apply heat to it and it would expand and kind of take on the shape of your bowl. But, but that's like a, a new sense of the word plug, right? Just kind of comes ready to go in, in your pipe tobacco. So um, just a little tangent there on the whole plug phenomenon, I guess. Um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You so. would think that's cool, Dave. That is cool. Yeah. Um, now, the most common objection that I hear, to especially from cigar smokers as to why they will not try smoking a pipe 
is that it's too much work. And, you know, smoking a plug here is, is maybe the quintessential object of that, that you have to cut it, you have to, you know, rub it out. And they say, what do you mean by rub it out? That sounds very, uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to say what that is. And <clears throat> what's your answer to that? What's your answer when somebody says pipe smoking is too much work? Right. I think um, I think that gets really blown out of proportion, if I'm telling you the truth. Um, with that being said, everything takes practice, okay? And to get better at it, you have to try it a couple of times. But I kind of mean that, you know, in the sense of there are instructions on how to pack a pipe and get a pipe lit. Um, but it's hard for me if I'm not smoking for you to tell you if you're smoking too fast, too slow, if you're tamping your, your pipe correctly, um, if you're lighting it correctly. So right. I guess to answer your question, Dan, I think, um, I, I don't think it's that difficult, but I think part of it is you have to try a couple of times and allow a little user error I don't know that any cigar smoker the first time smoking a cigar knew how to go about it and, and the proper way to cut it and get it lit um, and not relighting it, right? But um, I do think some of the more common complaints that I hear are easily addressable. So, for example, one being um, the pipe goes out. Out all the time. Oh, and uh, speak to that, your audio went out. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you have of you now? I see David. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. You can hear me? Still still here? Yeah, you're there. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. When did I drop out? Like a second ago. Okay. Your your video has dropped out, but your audio is there. You can hear me still? I can hear you. Yes. Okay. I just uh, that big Skypey S. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. uh, see here, we seem to have bars. Well, you you guys can hear me though, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so yeah, I guess what one thing that I hear is is the pipe goes out too fast when I'm smoking it, and so the for me, like one very one very easy fix is um is the old two finger method, right? And of course, now you can't see me on camera, but just kind of like stoving a campfire. You, yeah, you just like kind of that. lift your fingers up and off of it. Um, so that gets it re-going. But, but really, it comes down to practice a little bit. Um, the, the last parts of this question, I know <clears throat> we're answering it all over the place, but the last part of it is, you know, sometimes a, a brand new pipe is a little harder to get going and, and keep lit um, and be the full smoking experience, right? So right. when I say that, I mean... Generally speaking, a pipe needs to be smoked about 20 to 30 times to be kind of broken in, right, mm. um, to smoke correctly. And so I think unless you're kind of a fan of the flavors um, and the types of tobaccos, which are very different from cigars, and so you do get a lot of variety there that you don't get in cigars, um, it, you know, maybe it is a hard thing to get into, but... Um, really the most important thing is to accept that part of it is a little bit of a process and, and you sit down and you pack your pipe um, and you smoke it while you, while you un unwind, right? If, if you're getting going in the hobby, um, it's not going to be like smoking a cigar for you, right? Right, right, exactly. I, one of my favorite examples is comparing it to um, um, a, driving a standard versus an automatic. Whereas, <laughs> you, know, you know, you know, when you like my my oldest daughter is still learning how to drive and, and learning a standard is is terrifying to her. And, um, you know, you using both feet, both hands. It's a lot of work. But once you actually learn how to do that, it actually doesn't become you don't look at it as more work. You might actually enjoy it. Mm. And you actually enjoy the 
uh, greater control you have over your car and the engine that you have by driving a, a, a stick shift. And, um, you know, an automatic is great, but you don't have as much control over what's going on. You know, with a with the cigar, for instance, once you cut it, the draw you get is the draw you get. The flavors you get are the flavors you get. You're 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 basically enjoying somebody else's work, and with a pipe, you're taking somebody else's work, and you're kind of making it yours. You're packing the pipe how you want it. When you're talking a plug, you're even more involved because you're cutting it as thick or as thin as you want it. You're cutting it into cubes. You're cutting it into ribbons, big ribbons, small ribbons. You know, you have so much control over the draw, over the, the density of the pack that, um, you know, that you, you just don't have with cigars. And while there's a little bit more prep time for something like this, I don't know that you look at it as necessarily more work. You're, you're putting it in as, as you know, you're putting it, you're putting the work in that, that so that you will enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. You know what I mean, Max? Oh, absolutely. I think you, you hit the key word there too, as far as control goes, mm. um, like to your point, if you purchase a cigar and you smoke it and you don't enjoy it, that's just tough because that's the cigar you're smoking. <laughs> that's you right. Tobacco, you have this control and it extends beyond how I want to pack my bowl and how I want to cut my flake. Mm -hmm. If I don't like a certain blend, be it in a tin or in a bulk, I can go to my local tobacconist and I can say, hey, do you have some straight Virginia, some straight black Cavendish, right? I can mm -hmm. change this blend and make it sweeter. I can make it have more nicotine, have a heavier body if I add some straight burly, right? And that goes back to what we talked about in this blending class a year ago is oh my gosh, it, yes. you can really make it your own. It's like cooking almost, you know? And once you know the properties of the tobaccos, you really can start to have fun with, with making your own blends. And you open a tin and it's not right up your alley. Guess what? You can change it a little bit, you know? Yeah. So I think that's a huge part of it for me with, with pipe tobacco. There's a lot of control like you said yeah yeah that's exactly right we, we have a guy who's often at our pipe clubs will davis Willie. and uh he's an english gentleman he's been in the country for a long time but he was born in the mother country mm -hmm. and he likes what he calls latakia that is latakia latakia and you know it, it, he'll, he'll take a blend like this this three peas and go you know this is this is really pretty good, but you know what it could use? It could use a little talk. <laughs> you gotta use and, more of an English accent. And he'll Come and on. and he'll he'll add Latakia to it and he'll really, really like it. And it, that's something you just can't do with cigars. No. You can't change your experience. You know, you can if you want it tweaked a little bit, you can tweak it a little bit. And that's mm -hmm. a that's a really cool thing to be able to do. Definitely. Yeah. Now, um, here's another question I get a lot, and and I get this a lot myself. You know, again, I've I've already alluded to being called the Darth Piper. Mm -hmm. You know, people accuse me of using my wily powers to get them to buy pipes they don't really need. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. Edra's giving me that look right now that says, yes, you've done that to me. I've been whammied. <laughs> He's how, been bamboozled. How, how many pipes is too many pipes, Max? When oh, you're... come on now. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> exactly. You have, you have too many pipes when you don't know how many pipes you have. You're asking the wrong guy, man. I have, um, I have pipes I won't smoke. Because I think they're too nice. You have oh. pipes that you won't smoke because they're too nice. I have a pipe that I won't smoke. Uh, it's a Peter Stokeby straight stem, straight grain mm -hmm. uh, from the 80s. Don't make them anymore. You know, retails on eBay for a thousand plus bucks. Wow. Uh, so, so I just. I just I keep waiting for that perfect blend that's like, this is the only one you're going to smoke out of this pipe. And 
and you're going to be set on that, you know, for the rest of your life. And I guess uh, maybe it goes back to what I was saying earlier about just like finding a blend and, and smoking the hell out of it for a month. But I just haven't found that yet. So uh, okay. I have one that I haven't smoked out of. I think otherwise I, I'm probably at, uh, it's a low count for a pipe guy, but I'm probably at 40 to 50 pipes. 40 to 50? Which is low. Uh, which is low. That's low? My God, I got like four. That's yeah, like, I have like that's low. <laughs> yeah, no, that's I low have, for a pipe guy. I have about 20, 25. Really? Around there. Yeah. Yeah, but how long wow. have you been smoking? Like 20, 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I've bought like, 10 and since i started working <laughs> you know where i bought this peterson right at the pipe show yeah nice mm-hmm. i made it i made it out there for here, baby. yeah <laughs> and i realized i'd forgotten my pipe mm. which is a convenient ex- excuse i use to buy more pipes wink wink yeah uh, that almost happened to me today you know i knew we were going to be smoking two pipes tonight so I, I wanted to make sure that I had two pipes, and I, I made sure that I packed my <laughs> Eric Stokeby fourth generation for the second pipe tobacco here. And I made sure that I uh, packed my case with, with plenty of pipes, and then I left the plenty of pipes at home. And I almost, I, I actually went and looked to see if there was a pipe that I really kind of wanted in in the what we have here at, at, at hooks it and thank god i was able to resist my own waning and not <laughs> not buy another pipe i'm very surprised a mandy would have killed me mm. and b you know i already have 25 pipes and it was my own fault that i left left my extras at home but um you know that's that's certainly something that i've i've done in the past is is but you know you know I'm at the point, I think once you have 20 something pipes, the pipe really has to be kind of calling your name Mm -hmm. for you to, for you to get it. You know what I mean, Max? Uh, Well, to illustrate, highlight your point here, I say I have 40 to 50 and I think I use four to five. Yeah. So I know exactly what you mean. You know what I mean? And I'll try to bring the others into rotation and, inevitably it's like i have my favorites and i go back to them yep yep i have the same issue i have the same but it's like you know having a favorite beer glass or whatever sometimes you just you know like this this sherlock just works for for whatever purpose you know for whatever tobaccos yep absolutely um what are some of your favorite tobaccos that stg offers uh aaron Moore, as i alluded to oh, earlier yeah. orlick golden sliced um in the bulk section uh obviously one q is is great i don't smoke as as much as i used to anymore um sure lane blwb which is burly and light without a bite Mm-hmm. that's a very burly heavy aromatic um yeah. it's only burly but so you get a nice nicotine buzz off of it but it's sure uh, they, they take away all that tongue bite basically which i talked about earlier um and then on the stokeby bulk side it's the the flakes all three of them the navy flake uh the navy twist flake and the luxury bullseye flake all of which are huge sellers here at Twins. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, those are those are all my favorites, man. Those are the ones that I continue to go back to. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I'm fortunate enough to get to smoke a lot of different tobaccos, but um, some of them, yeah, I keep going back to. So th- those are some of them. Um, of course, the Peterson or the brand formerly known as Dunhill nightcap early morning <laughs> my mixture 965 i can always smoke those when i'm ready for an english i don't smoke as many englishes lately uh, as i have in the past but uh love me a good english. sometimes the, the palate just comes and goes so what are some of the stg tobaccos that uh, are like hidden gems or ones that you wish people would try that that they're not that's a good question 
That's a very good question. Well, I thank you. Um, I thank think you. Uh, actually one of them that I <laughs> I wanted to do tonight is the uh, the Peterson University Flake. Have University. you guys had that one before? No, we have not. There Sean has not brought it in yet. There's something for us to try maybe next time. Um, it's it's a Virginia Burley as well, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's uh, a little similar to um, the uh, the three P's. It's mm -hmm. sort of an earthier uh, Virginia, and so you're not getting as much of that uh, floral sweetness that you typically get in, in Virginia Burley. So. Okay. Um, the university flake is is one of them i would say um on the bulk side oh boy there's so many uh one that gets uh is criminally underrated is uh peter stoke could be pistachio oh wow. peter stoke yeah. pistachio kendra's intrigued Give it to peter me. stoke could be pistachio is really good it's an aromatic obviously with pistachio top flavor but it's uh, in line with the the Stokeby aromatics, as far as the top flavor isn't uh, super predominant as it is in, for example, a Lane aromatic like a One Q or a BCA, where you're just getting a lot of sweetness, right? Um, in the the Stokeby pistachio and in all the Stokeby aromatics, you're getting more tobacco forward flavors with a little top note. So yeah, <laughs> Stokeby pistachio is good stuff. Yeah. I hear a little family uh, umph umph for the uh, Stokeby stuff there versus that uh, lesser quality Lane stuff. <laughs> we don't <laughs> talk about that here. <laughs> well, speaking of that, um, what makes 1Q so stinking popular? <laughs> it's tobacco, man. It's the best. It's been the best-selling aromatic pipe tobacco in the United States for decades. And it's like the Bud Light of pipe tobacco. What no, makes it's not. It Come so, on. Yes, it is. Come but on. It, but it Bud is Light basically, yeah, hey. yeah, it is. It's the it's the best-selling pipe tobacco in the world, actually. In the um, world. If you look at if you look at volume, yeah, one Q. Um, so yeah. It, <laughs> I mean, what nobody even special. knows what one Q means. How can it be so popular? One Q, yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's funny you bring that up, you know, because a lot of our bulk blend names date back to the '70s and '80s, back when Herman G. Lane was coming up with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of them, RLQ3, you know, I don't know what that stands for. Some of them, <laughs> some of them we do, uh, but. One Q is not one of them. Right. Uh, it's not. You know, I've heard the one Q stands for one quarter is BCA. Uh, so then that would make, you know, the other three quarters different golden Cavendish, I suppose, right? Sure. Um, yeah. And then it has a top flavor of vanilla. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know what it is that makes it so good, but it's, uh, for one thing, it's just so damn consistent. And yeah. um, that second half of the bowl, tastes so identical to the top half of the bowl, which is not something you always get in aromatics, right? It's something we pride ourselves in as a manufacturer in our in our topping, in our top flavors. It's infused into the tobaccos um, where it actually sits in a room and, and sort of absorbs this mist of, of flavor, if you will, into the tobacco leaf as opposed to a simple spray uh, where it's burned off by the fire that's applied to the to the tobacco, right? So that second half, you've burned off all the top flavor in our tobaccos that's actually absorbed into the leaf. So the second half of your bowl of 1Q tastes identical to the top half, almost identical, right, in terms of, yeah. of your aromatic notes. So consistency, uh, it smokes so damn smooth. And pardon my French, I know I'm cursing a lot, but it is really, really smooth, as you know. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I referred to earlier how I like to pair these, uh, more, more round beers, earthier beers with my, uh, Virginia Periques and my Burleys. The only exception I make, and when I kind of drink uh, the Pilsners and the IPAs and the hoppier beers with pipe tobacco, it has to be aromatic. So almost like a, a heavy Cavendish, like a 1Q or a BCA, something where the, 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 the smoothness of the smoke and the 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 
sweetness uh, counterbalances that really acidic uh, burn, I guess, for lack of a better word, that I get in some of those poppier beers. So, right. And if you couldn't tell, I'm a beer guy, so that's, you know, my parents. I, I couldn't <laughs> at all. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how, how do you get somebody off of 1Q? You don't. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So personally, personally how do you move somebody everything. from Bud Light to Coors Light? <laughs> the, right. the Sam Adams, the the nice, you know, milky, the milky stout that you're doing. I mean, how how do you do that? I mean, because somebody who likes who likes one Q, it's like all they smoke. And there's so much more that you guys offer than just one Q. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's like if they like one Q, man, that's the end all be all of human existence. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> like, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 what's, what, what is it I'm trying to think of? It's like um, Guardians of the Galaxy. That, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not, not going to anything else. Miss Guardians of the Galaxy. You mean I'm like, more of an Iron Man guy myself, yeah. but I understand, you. I understand your point. Yeah. Um, so, all right, here's the thing. And, and like I said, I was, I was guilty myself, man. I was a, all aromatic, primarily 1Q, occasionally a little RLP6, maybe some straight BCA. And I started smoking Englishes gradually by smoking these hybrid blends that I was kind of alluding to earlier of making it yourself. So um, your English gentleman, Willie, was it uh, said it best, get a little Latakia. Um, I mean, buy, buy like an ounce of Latakia on the side of your 1Q, sprinkle in just baby bits, right? It's easier to, to add than it is to subtract when it comes to blending tobacco. True. Sprinkle in a little bit and see how that how that hybrid blend is gonna taste for you. Maybe they'll like the smokiness. If they're not a fan of the smokiness, then Latakia maybe isn't for them. Then you could try Perique, right? Those are the two primary uh, seasoning components in pipe tobacco blends. Correct. You rarely would have a blend that's uh, over forty to fifty percent of either Perique or Latakia, and that would be on the very high end. Right. Um, so, right. so I recommend try to try to you know if they don't want to buy it, give them a little pinch and see if they'll they'll sprinkle it in there. That's how I started those hybrid blends where you still get some of the sweetness and the the smooth cool smoke from the black Cavendish, but that smoky flavor and smell from the Latakia. That's the the bridge to that gap that I took, um, and then from there I started getting into the straight English blends that obviously have no uh, aromatic tobaccos in them. And from there, I, I started smoking the Virginias and then adding in a little Perique gradually at a time. But um, I think maybe leveling back to what I mentioned earlier when you asked how to, how to get uh, somebody to try pipe smoking for those that you know say it's, it's too much, it, that, that's part of it is, is developing your palate and figuring out what you like, right? And so uh, if we don't try it, then we don't know. So, right. you know, I, I think uh, get them the bulk of what they want and get them a little bit of that condiment tobacco on the side and say, try it. And if you kind of like what that tastes like, we got more for you. So what you're saying is we need to buy some condiment tobaccos. Oh. Mm. And sprinkle it in. And sprinkle it in. Sprinkle Sorry. a little crack on this guy. Are you they listening? Tell anybody? Are you listening, Sean? I'm sure he is. Uh, I'm sure. I'm he sure he's not. not. He's not. <laughs> Danny, Danny's gonna have a meeting with him on Saturday morning. That's too bad because that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Um. So, Paul, you have. Do you have something for us tonight? As far as uh, is is Paul blowing smoke? I do. Uh oh. oh okay, here we go. Smoke. Here we go. Let's see if you. Can Let's see if you can guess if I'm blowing smoke, Kendra. Okay, let's do it. All right, ready for this? Mm -hmm. Do it. Romeo and Julieta. Yeah. Monte Cristo. Uh -huh. And Cohiba. Mm -hmm. 
are the oldest Cuban brands still in existence that each have a non-Cuban counterpart? So the question is, is Romeo and Juliet, Cohiba, and Monte Cristo the oldest Cuban Cuban brands that still have a Dominican? Still in existence that each have a non-Cuban counterpart. I'm going to say you're blowing smoke. I would say he's blowing smoke as well. Dave? Hmm. You have to think about that. Mm. Yes, he does. <laughs> uh, Kendra, do you have anything you want to add? Do you, you think me? Paul's blowing smoke? Okay. Yes, I'm not Kendra's, kidding you. Kendra's I'm like, I don't you. know what the hell you're he's talking about. You're part of the show. <laughs> Dave? Um, I will concur with my brethren. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You're, well, Kendra, do you want to just give a yay or nay? Yay. Yay? Yes, you're blowing smoke. I'm blowing smoke. I'm not blowing smoke. Not blowing smoke. You're wrong. Ooh, yeah. you're, you're all right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, except for well, except for Dave. Dave, the oldest Cuban brands still in existence that each have a non-Cuban counterpart are Por Laranaga, which was created in 1834. Mm. Punch. Punch, mm-hmm. which That's was born in yep. 1840, mm-hmm. and H. Upman, yep. H. Which, Upman, which yes. was 1844, mm-hmm. which wasn't uh, JFK's. What, was it JFK's mm-hmm. favorite cigar to smoke? I do not know that. Paul doesn't. Mm-hmm. That wasn't part of the question. Oh, I'm sorry. But that is <laughs> didn't that, mean that, across that, the but, line. But that the is banker. but that but that is an interesting <laughs> point. I don't know. I don't know what JFK smoked. I think it was. I think it was the H. Upmans that he primarily smoked he smoked a lot of cubans cohibas yeah. uh partagas but i think it was the h upman that he um was it the banker uh, oh, uh, no banker. it was not the banker <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys i'm gonna put that on my headstone have yes. you guys have uh Nick all you guys all where, you guys do a eulogy where where were you at max did you think uh he was just blowing smoke or do you think he was telling the truth I thought he was telling this. I thought he was telling the truth. Oh, see, Kendra, you weren't alone. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my goodness! And Nick, you have a you have a, a meme of the week. I Here. do. This one's uh, geared towards the pastor over here. <laughs> oh, Everybody's gonna get one every week. Kendra will be. Uh, Kendra will be next week. Even though she won't be here, but we'll get we'll we'll do a nice little do it when do it do it when she's here do it when she's here. So the next time she's on the show, we'll make sure that we get a meme for her. Yes. Uh, But this one's for Danny. Okay. Yeah, I actually spoke with Danny uh, last time on it, and uh, it's uh, the Velosa Pastor. (laughs) The Velosa. (laughs) Velosa. Nice. And Danny can read as soon as. uh, it pops up on the screen. Danny can read the mm-hmm. the uh, the. We have about the, a 20, the show notes. Twenty second lag there on the the lost pastor. Oh my gosh! After losing his parents, a priest travels to China, <laughs> where he inherits the mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. Uh, At first. I, at first, horrified by this, by his new powers, um, uh, prostitute. Uh, the, the, yeah. I can't read what that says, uh, Dave. What is him this? to use it to fight crime and <laughs> yes. Wow, that's. I want to see this. That's actually. It, it started off as a meme, and it was a meme that I found probably about a year ago and they actually made a movie of this which is crazy i saw a trailer of it the other day and i was like oh my god this is insane this is absolutely insane that is absolutely insane but it's a a, the perfect movie Mm -hmm. the perfect (laughs) 
and a prostitute convinces him to use it to fight crime and yeah, ninjas. I'm sure this is a like, oh, oh my god, it's an awesome movie. Oh, that is absolutely horrible, dude. It's it's got four out of five stars. How can it not be a great movie? <laughs> four or five. Or five. <laughs> They're all from him. Four or five. Painting it's got four or five stars on badmovies.com. Check it out. I know, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, this may be a good time to introduce the last uh, segment of the night: the "Would You Rather" question. Tag and into it. I- I'm thinking it's a really good time oh, to boy. introduce the "Would You Rather" question. And um, this is this is no, yeah. it has nothing to do with <laughs> prostitutes. So, um, uh, Dave, we'll start with you. Oh boy! Okay. <laughs> okay. Would you rather? Go on an African safari Ooh. or spend a week hiking at Denali State Park in Alaska. Ooh. And since you don't really know, Dave, Denali is the tallest mountain in the United States. So you would be experiencing African some cold safari. weather, which Dave loves. Yeah. African safari. Snow, Dave, snow. African safari. You, you, African safari? You, African you lie. You're going you're gonna to give up snow? You're on yes. crack, Dave. No. It's, I, I've always, I've always been, like, I watch a lot of documentaries, and I, like, watch, I a, watch lot a lot of Planet Earth documentaries. Like I would love to go I watch on, a like, lot of those Green Lantern I documentaries. Uh, <laughs> Green Lantern documentaries? <laughs> Green Lantern documentaries, yeah. There is yeah. such a thing? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Ryan Reynolds, but there is. <laughs> I'm starring. Uh, no, no. I'd be, I'd be playing. I'd be playing. You know, Africa by Toto the entire time. Oh my gosh. Oh god. Nick, Nick, what about you? Uh, African safari or hiking in Denali State Park? African safari. African safari. It would be the African safari. Mm-hmm. I'd run alongside the antelopes and lions and <laughs> while lioness. eating cantaloupe. <laughs> Would yes, I'd be eating cantaloupe while <laughs> running alongside the cantaloupe. <laughs> I'd be eaten by the lion the while looking at the cantaloupe. I'd be Ooh, joining in. Ah, I'd be eating my lion. <laughs> I would, and I'd be joining in on the, on the hunt. Mm. I would be. I'd jump right off that that Land Rover and cantaloupe hunt and and run alongside those lioness because they do all the hunting. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. Max, what about you? Would you rather be on an African safari? Or spending a week hiking at Denali State Park in Alaska. Well, first of all, Nick, it sounds like you'll fit right into the matriarchy. Um, oh yeah. I, I think personally, I'm gonna have to go African Safari too. I'm a little spoiled. Uh, one of my best high school buddies actually is a, a glacier guy in Alaska, and so. Uh, knock on wood, uh, all things pending. My plan is to go out this summer and do a glacier hike with him in the Alaskan outback. Make sure so you your boy gets to do both. Nice. Lucky man you are. Make sure you got a sat phone. Hopefully, knock on wood, yeah. Polly? Pa? Polly? Paul. I, Polly? I, I do Paul. like the... I do Polly? Like, Paul. I do like... <laughs> Polly? I do like the hike. <laughs> <laughs> but only in the but only in the summertime, <laughs> and you know how much I detest winter. Mm. So the African safari wins hands down. I've mm. always wanted to go on a uh, African safari. So absolutely, that's, that's without question. Kendra, I've saved the best for last. Yeah, same. should be should be I'm on sure Denali. Anybody choose should be Denali hitting the mountain in Alaska. I don't know who no. would. No, I wouldn't. It's cold. Yeah, would it be so. perfect weather for boots and sweaters? <laughs> sweaters and boots. <laughs> sweaters and boots. <laughs> Lots of sweaters and boots. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be like four sweaters. Give me some sausage enough. rope and sweaters and boots. <laughs> sausage rope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the African safari where there's cute animals mm-hmm. and cute little lions. <clears throat> Timon and Pumbaa. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to reenact the, the Lion King when I'm down there. <laughs> Hold up Simba and then probably get mauled by a tiger or lion or something. Probably. Bears holding down. up a 
a, a little anyone who watches this show for more than a minute knows that i hate the winter so mm-hmm. it will be the african safari for me just because africa <laughs> it's the motherland the i guess it rains down, <laughs> down yes. in africa yes mm-hmm. we should do a podcast show mm-hmm. from I've Africa let, doing I've the safari. rains down in Africa. Yes, I do. guess it rains down I in bless. Africa. Oh, it definitely I rains bless. down in Africa. I bless. I bless, not I guess. I guess. Get I it. guess it rains down in Africa. <laughs> I guess it rains down in Africa. I don't really listen to the lyrics. The car. <laughs> oh, oh my niggas. gosh! So what's what's our final uh, verdict on uh, Peterson's three Ps? Peterson's perfect plug. Paul, just, just a lot of deep fruit. Um, <clears throat> wonderful uh, for the Retro Hill. It's just a super smooth spice. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, it's it's certainly a little bit different than the Elisa B. Uh, a little little bit. What? <laughs> but uh this has really been a fantastic tobacco i really really enjoyed the fruit the nice bread notes a little bit of wood but the fruit notes stand out it's uh transcendent mm. kendra do you think it's transcendent i do think so yeah. oh, i do all right yes. there we go <laughs> why do you think it's transcendent oh truly transcendent one Well, I I guess I can speak to the pairing where both of them Mm. are very balanced, um, medium to full bodied and smooth still, like super quality. You can tell. Oh, yes. Yeah. Really rich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, um, I would say this is definitely the, the best pairing of the more recent shows that I've been on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They really enjoyed it. Dave, I love the the fruit flavors I get in this. The retro hail is also amazing. The pairing is quintessential. Quintessential. Yes. Mm. Nice work. Very Two nice thumbs word. up. He's, he's using thank the dictionary you. tonight. It's, it's a much bigger word than Dave is used to. So thank you for. He's been reading that. his dictionary. I was sharing the power words with Dave early today. So absolutely, he must have picked it up. Nick, what about you? Do you have anything to say further than what's already been said? It's a complex blend. I really like, even though it's a Virginia Burley, um, getting the Virginias up front, Burleys in the back. <laughs> Bro, that's, that's good, Nick. You're getting Damn. both the Virginias and the Burleys. Damn, you guys are killing me. Uh, <laughs> bless you, sir, for you have sinned. Um, nice little spice. Bless oh. you, for you oh, have yeah. sinned again. Feel free to coming. move your mic. Yeah. Um, uh. nice, little, nice little spice in the retro hail. Like I said, with the with the pairing, brings out a little bit more of the spice for me. Mm-hmm. Um, very nice, both the pairing and the tobacco. Really, really, really rich. Both of them, very, very nice. Uh, I love it. For me, very complimentary pairing. Yes. Very well done. Uh, I agree. It's the better of the two pairings. Mm. Uh, although I really enjoyed the hot toddy with the. Uh, uh, Virginia Perique. Yes, I did too. Um, but real rich fruity notes, earthiness. Um, there's this nutty, almost cocoa note with the uh, Burleys here, which is really, really nice. This is a really rich tobacco. Mm. It is. It's it very, very well with the. Uh, what what particular is the 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 whiskey again it's uh nika from the barrel it's nika Jap- from the barrel it's a japanese whiskey from the barrel as oh. opposed to the uh oh. bag or the box mm-hmm. you know <laughs> <laughs> can i get some bag whiskey I don't even know. <laughs> make that put it in the fridge next to my wine yeah <laughs> 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 And uh, I assume you like this too, being that it's uh, something that you, uh, you know, own. Yeah, it's okay. No. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I love it. Um, it uh, to me, it's just very robust, um, especially coming off of that Elizabethan mixture. Um, so much more body here. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a smoke I definitely enjoy. That's awesome. Now, um, next week, a little uh, preview here. Uh, we're going to be talking lighters. 
Lighters. Lighters. Some like it hot. And lighting and relighting. And uh, we're going to be talking about how to do it and maybe just as importantly, how not to do it. Mm. And as we talk about lighters and lighting and relighting, we're going to be smoking the Charter Oak Habano Toro. Ooh. Mm. And Rattray's Old Gallery. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Those are going to be some good cigars yeah. and tobacco nice. to smoke. Mm -hmm. so make sure you're back with us next week at 8 o'clock on YouTube here. Max, thank you so much for being with us this week. We really appreciate it. We know we've had some challenges with the video here, but I think the audio's turned out okay at yep. least. I hope so, and thank you guys so much for inviting me back on the show. I have a a blast with you guys uh, every time, apparently. And uh, yeah, I, I just I can't wait to, uh, to come back out there and do it in person again. So yeah, that's gonna Likewise. be awesome, especially for Dave, who's probably freaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for in the, hanging in there with us, guys, tonight, and we'll see you next week, next Monday at eight o'clock, right here on YouTube. Until then. This has been Not Just Blowing Smoke. Another day, another smoke.